Welcome back to Palangi 21. Today I will show you a 2023 psychological thriller film titled Eileen. In Massachusetts during the 1960s, a 24-year-old Eileen secretly waits in her car by the lake, and her eyes are fixed on the car parked before her. She experiences a rush of sexual pleasure watching the couple in the car make out. With her mother passing away and her sister getting married, the responsibility of looking after her father Jim fell upon Eileen. Jim is a former police officer, suffered from paranoia and often got in trouble for disturbing the neighbors. His alcohol addiction made it all the more intolerable for Eileen to continue living with him. She works in a corrections facility for teenage boys. She watches one of the inmates there, named Lee Polk, before she is scolded by her colleagues because of her lack of dexterity. She also fantasizes about one of the guards Randy. Later, she buys booze for Jim, and when she gets home, she finds that Jim is on the street pointing a gun at his neighbor. After calming him down and taking him in, Jim compares Eileen to her sister, and tells her to get a life. The next day, Eileen looks at Lee again. When she takes out the trash, she sees a woman who catches her attention. Later, the woman introduces herself as a new psychologist, Rebecca St. John. Rebecca who is confident enough to hold her head high in a room full of men, is almost the definition of perfection for Eileen. She doesn't expect Rebecca to approach her, and their interactions ultimately makes her feel seen. Rebecca's presence immediately lifts Eileen's mood, and she begins to look forward to going to the facility. Later, Eileen and Rebecca watch a Christmas drama. Eileen keeps looking at Rebecca until the drama is stopped because of a fight between inmates. Eileen starts smoking after she saw Rebecca's habit. She tells Jim that today is an unforgettable day for her. Jim tells her about the war, and asks about Lee, who was captured after stabbing his father to death. He asks what kind of son killed his father like that. Jim emphasizes that Eileen will never do something like that, because he can't imagine Eileen with a knife. Eileen asks what about a gun, and Jim says that's impossible because Eileen is too good. Eileen looks for Lee's files, and Rebecca's sudden arrival surprises her. They talk a little about their lives. Eileen is immediately drawn to Rebecca's intellectual conversation and glamorous appearance. Rebecca begins working with Lee. She invites Lee's mother Rita, to speak with her and Lee, but Rita soon leaves distraught after Lee refused to speak with her. Rebecca invites Lee into her office to continue their conversation. Randy says something bad about Rebecca, but Eileen defends her. Eileen goes to Rebecca's office to give her the notes she left behind. Rebecca invites Eileen to a local bar, and she agrees to it in an instant. Eileen starts to dress up, and she wears her mother's best clothes to make an impression. Rebecca talks passionately about her work after a few drinks. She is very fixated on the Lee Polk case. Eileen had heard about Lee stabbing his father to death in his sleep and not saying a word afterward. A part of her could understand the boy's emotions, and she agreed with the same sentiments that Rebecca experienced. Later, Rebecca invites Eileen to dance with her. The intimate dance makes Eileen feel more hopeful about her relationship with Rebecca. She feels special when Rebecca punches a guy who tries to interrupt their dance. Rebecca then kisses Eileen before leaving. The next morning, Eileen wakes in her car to find that Jim has locked her out of the house. She enters through the window, and asks for the car key, but Jim refuses to give it to her. As she cleans vomit from the seat of her car, a local policeman arrives to inform her that the neighbors have raised complaints about Jim's violent and erratic behavior. As a consequence, Jim has agreed to relinquish his gun into Eileen's care. She then imagines killing herself with it. When she goes to work, her car engine breaks down and continues to emit smoke. At work, Eileen is upset to learn that Rebecca has already left for the Christmas holiday. Eileen spends the day sleeping on Rebecca's desk. When Eileen returns home that evening, she finds Jim lying on the floor in a pool of blood. She takes him to the hospital, and on the way, Jim strokes her thigh and calling the name of her sister. The scene suggested that Jim had sexually assaulted her sister before. It explains why her sister preferred staying away from their father and Eileen's hatred towards him. He is his usual self after he is discharged from the hospital with minor bandaging. The doctor informs Eileen that her father won't live long because of his drinking habit. That night, she and Jim share a drink. Jim reminds her how insignificant she is to the world. He describes Eileen as a background character in a film whose decisions never impact the actual storyline. Eileen hates her father, and in her head, she imagines various scenarios of her shooting him dead. On Christmas Eve, Eileen receives a call from Rebecca, inviting her to her house for drinks, and once again, she enthusiastically agrees. Rebecca's house isn't what Eileen had imagined, 
but she doesn't mind the mess as long as she can spend the night with Rebecca. Rebecca throws a cat out of her house, and seems clueless about corkscrews and opening wine bottle by banging it against the wall. She looks concerned when Eileen goes to the restroom, and when she returns, Rebecca just offers a piece of cheese and a jar of pickles. Eileen is nervous about the way she presented herself, and she doesn't pay attention to small details at the time. Rebecca explains how the people at the facility weren't open to the ideas she presented and deemed necessary to bring about real change. Eileen leads herself to believe that Rebecca will finally talk about their relationship, but instead, she mentions the Lee Polk case again. Rebecca firmly believed that it was impossible for Rita slept through the incident without ever trying to peek and find out what was going on. Rebecca had called Rita to the facility to find out the truth, but she refused to admit anything. Rebecca had cracked the case when she asked Lee about his relationship with his father, and he confessed that he was his assaulter. Rebecca then reveals that she tied up Rita in the basement, and that the house isn't hers, but belonged to the Polk family. Eileen heads for the door, but Rebecca stops her. She explains that she had come to visit Rita the previous afternoon in the hopes that she would finally defend her son, but she didn't say a word. Even after discussing what her son had confided in her, the mother chose to portray her husband as a saint and abuse Rebecca. She left the house, but she couldn't stop thinking about the case. Rebecca drove back to the Polk house that night to get a confession after accusing Rita of complying with her husband's torturous ways. She attacked Rebecca, and they ended up getting into a fight and falling down the stairs to the basement. Rebecca was afraid that Rita would kill her, so she tied her down. She tried to interact with her rationally, but Rita refused to cooperate, and she was clueless about dealing with the situation. She called Eileen in the hopes that she would have a friend and a witness, who would help her get out of the trouble and would also assist her in getting a confession from her. Eileen reluctantly agrees to help, and getting her father's gun from her car. Rita refuses to cooperate. She has no reason to be afraid of the two women in the room, but that was before Eileen pointed her gun at her. Rita agrees to confess, fearing for her life. She admits that all these years, she had known that her husband repeatedly abused their son. She initially assumed that Mitch checked on Lee every day, but one night, when she woke up, she saw the shocking truth. But instead of protecting her son, Rita chose to live with it. Knowing the truth and choosing not to react wasn't easy for her, but she did it in the hopes of keeping her husband close to her. After she found out his secret, he was more relieved, and he showed more affection to her. She preferred to live in her bubble rather than take a step against her husband. As Rita finishes her story, Eileen shoots her in the shoulder. She is upset upon learning the truth, and she possibly could relate to the scenario. Rita is screaming for help, and Rebecca and Eileen drug Rita into unconsciousness. Amid Rebecca's unease, Eileen suggests framing Jim for the shooting and running away together, confessing her love for Rebecca. Eileen interprets the situation as a way to escape reality. She no longer has to deal with her father, and she can spend her life with Rebecca. After loading Rita into Eileen's car, Rebecca suggests that Eileen head home while she cleans the house to get rid of all evidence. She promises to meet Eileen at her house. Eileen waits for Rebecca, but she doesn't show up. Instead of framing her father, Eileen drives to a remote forest and leaves the still-drugged Rita in her car, which fills with engine smoke. Eileen then returns to the main road and hitches a ride smiling to herself as she leaves the town. Eileen feels happy because she has always wanted to escape, and this situation forces her to step out of her comfort zone. Eileen is a lonely and unhappy young woman who works at a juvenile prison. She shows her desire to be seen and acknowledged. Eileen's life changes drastically when Rebecca enters her life. Eileen is completely smitten with the charming and confident Rebecca. I love the acting and chemistry between the two. The character writing in the film is well done. I enjoyed the character development for Eileen. She initially lived a boring and confined life, but then she was finally able to break free. In the film, Eileen always looks out for Lee, perhaps because she understands how Lee feels about killing his father. The scene that impressed me the most was Eileen's conversation with Rebecca. Rebecca asks what kind of son would want to kill his own father, and Eileen replies that everyone wants to kill their father. Eileen herself didn't have a good relationship with her father, who often drank heavily and also abused her sister. The ending of this film is left hanging. I was hoping for something to happen at the end but there wasn't and it felt disappointing. Eileen and Rebecca's relationship is not told further. What happens next for Eileen's father and the Polk family is all a mystery. Eileen is one of those films where all the pieces build to be something great, but just don't come together quite right. The film feels a bit flat. There was quite a long and drawn out build-up, and the results weren't worth it. 
I still like the film, but feel like it could have been something more. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notification.